Now, just a couple of weeks ago, Melanie Sykes posted a video online to open up about something very personal, which she says has helped make sense of herself and her life. She shared the news that she has been diagnosed as autistic at the age of 51. Yesterday, after, after a series of assessments last week, uh, a report came back to tell me that I am autistic. And it's such a positive diagnosis for me because it makes sense of my life and I've had to go back and look at my life and sort of unpick it and, and, and retell it because it has a completely different lens using uh, Harry's terminology and there's a sense of relief about it but there's also a sense of mourning not because I don't want to be who I am and what I am and that I'm autistic that's that's not it it's that I wish I'd known sooner so I could have understood exactly why things were rolling the way they were rolling. And I'm honestly so, so happy to see you joining us in the studio to talk more about this. Oh, Melanie, thanks for honestly. having me, honestly, it's great. When I, I, when, I, when I saw that video for the first time and I read all the articles that are written about it subsequently, it was just incredible. When you heard that diagnosis, did it feel like the penny had dropped, things suddenly made yeah, sense. Yeah, and they're still dropping. Honestly, every day, every minute of every day, I'm sort of having realisations about all my sensitivities. Uh, but um, I'd, I'd, I've been working with Harry Thompson, who is an autis autistic guy who um, is a speaker. He knows everything there is to know about it, and there he is. And um, we were working on a documentary about the education system and how it doesn't serve autistic people, and he, he was round at mine and we were chatting. And we'd already done a FaceTime, like, two weeks before, but we were met in the flesh. And, you know, 10 minutes in, he sort of thought, I might have an ADHD profile slash autistic profile based on how open I am, how expressive I am, um, the, my ability to, to have pick up and drop lots of different bits of conversation but keep it lateral and stuff like that. I mean, I, I've had to message him this morning to say, remind me what it was that you thought I was autistic <laughs> about. Because everybody keeps asking me and I can't remember. So, because it's his idea of what makes me autistic. I know now what makes me autistic. Yeah. And it is the fabric of who I am and who I've always yeah. been. And I think I'm great. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I know that, and this has been the big thing for me because I'm I'm not here for me. I don't need the airtime. I don't care about the column inches. I've had 25 years of this, and that's not what what I did it for. I'm here for everybody that has been diagnosed, who's a bit embarrassed about it, who you know. I have my phone has blown up with mothers of teenage girls going, "I've just shown her your video," and she's like. Oh my God, right, it's a good thing. And it is a good yeah. thing because there's, it's all the positives about mm. someone. They call it a disorder which needs to get absolutely scrapped. Absolutely. Mm. Because it isn't the things I can't do, it's the, the things, things that, that I can do yeah. that make, that are my autistic mm. sensibilities. Now and that that's you, what we need to change. Now that you've had this diagnosis, is there anything in your life that you think would be different had you realised it earlier? Um, well, I would have asked for more of what I needed, especially in this industry, because there's a lot of sensitivities that I was, I, I sort of dealt with, because I didn't think I had a voice to change anything, although I did work with lots of different men that would change mm. the temper of temperature in a studio or change the angle of a, of a camera so they didn't get a double chin. And I'm not talking about Des O'Connor here, I will not <laughs> name names. <laughs> Um, but, you know, the men are able to just say, I need this, I need yeah, yeah. that. And I didn't feel like I could because every time I might have said potentially things didn't feel right, people go, oh, but you're so good at it. And the thing is, I'm good at getting on with it because it's part of my nature. And you adapt, I guess. You yeah, adapt but it to hurts it a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's all a little bit uncomfortable because I'm not stage school. I'm not... No. Yeah. yeah, so it's always been a little bit against the grain. And the, the fear of the stigma that a lot of people kind of hold with anything like that, whether it's um, dyslexia, yeah. autism. Yeah. And like you said, it's the most positive thing if you look at it from a different perspective. Well, yeah, and that's the whole point, is that autistic people have a different view of the world. It doesn't make it not right. Just because people that aren't autistic dictate what it is to be normal mm -hmm. or yeah. what is considered a disorder. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, I... 
you need to talk to autistic people about what autism is, not people that yeah, aren't. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't possibly know if you're not it. And it's and looking it... at it differently, isn't it? Mm. Because now we talk about neurodiversity. Yes. Rather than talking about it being a disorder, because we have to look at the positives. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not everybody's brain and bodies are, are the same, and that's a positive thing to be celebrated, right? Yeah, well, I'd say so. And I think that, you know, we'll go back to say, we talk about the education system. <clears throat> You know, I and I have a magazine. I've had an online magazine called The Frank Magazine for two and a half years, and I set it up, and I suddenly was doing dealing with 200 pages. There I am, got it. Just <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Yay! <laughs> That's when I was 50, wow. celebrating my 50th. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I was across 200 pages of a magazine online, and I suddenly realised I can look at this thing and see exactly what's wrong with the page. Page after page, I knew where things should be, how things should look. I do all the interviews, I edit, and I was in my element because I wasn't in front of anybody. I was at my computer just doing what I do best, which is communicating, mm. which interviewing people is my bag. Mm. <laughs> it always has yeah. been yeah. because I'm really interested in mm. other people. Mm. And I think at school, if only somebody might have noticed that mm. I was a creative, mm. somebody might have seen that I, you know, I did love to draw, I did love English, I didn't mm. do very well, I got two Bs in little language. It's not bad, I was surprised at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good when, for somebody like me who doesn't understand cryptic, I can't do cryptic, so I've never been good at understanding poetry because mm. it's not black and white. Yeah. You have to sort of suss out what it means mm. and therefore Shakespeare, oh my God. Yeah, well, not many get Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, no, it's I true. mean, he's brilliant, but it's, I mean... Yeah. No, it's brilliant, <laughs> yeah. but if you go and see a play, if you go and see a play, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Like, but when you yeah. read... Why? Well, for me, when you read it, it was... When I read it, I just couldn't process yeah. it. Something I was interested in that, that I read that you said is that um, women don't get tested or diagnosed as quickly as, as yeah. men. Well, you know, Tino, my son, um, he's 17 now and he was diagnosed when he was three. And I was told that then, that girls just don't... It doesn't get as, as seen because mm. potentially they, they hide it well or... But I, I guess what it throws up is that question of if you're being tested against what, how a boy or a male presents a certain condition or disease like heart disease it looks very different to how mm. a woman presents mm. it so why are we being looked at in the form of man when we are completely yeah, different absolutely. animals mm. yeah and so we've got to start looking at woman and what happens with that woman yeah. mm. and not a, a ben the man is the benchmark for the thing it's yeah. like no we have to change that what a I'm... great role model you are yeah <laughs> oh. I mean, everyone out there darling that's reaching out that is thinking you know with with autism, you know, I didn't think that I could be someone like Mel, Mel who's sitting here, yeah. confident, and uh, you're giving a, a, a loads and, of people out there the confidence. And actually, we I know, and that's why I'm that. here, Penny. Brilliant. That's why I'm here, Brilliant. darling. You were, and we had, um, we had a statement from the National Autistic Society, and they said that it's brilliant that more and more people in the public eye are talking openly about autism because it really will impact people's lives and yeah. make people get a diagnosis. Yeah. And they'll think if you can do it, then they can yeah. do it. Too. And it will make sense of things. Yeah. And it's okay to be yeah, yourself. It's okay. Yeah. In it's all okay. forms that that presents itself. So, yeah. yes. And for me, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge honour to have you in, <laughs> on the panel with me because I just think you're an absolute rock star. So thank, thank you so much you, for coming. Thank on. you.